Come on, how many of y'all believe that right there where you're at, that the God that we worship is great, he's mighty, he's all powerful, he is the God that can make a way even when it looks like there is no way. Again, guys, thank you so much uh, for joining us today for this online experience. I know it's not the same. I got to tell you, I miss you guys. It, it's so different to, to have a room empty here and not see your faces and just be preaching into this camera. But I know that very soon again, we're going to be able to worship together. And I got to tell you, when that day comes, you're going to have to take off your PJs to come to church. But again, thank you guys for being here. I hope uh, you, you're well. I hope your family is well. Know that we are praying for you. And, and I want to ask us to all to continue to pray. Let's continue to pray for, you know, all the essential workers that are serving our community, serving our state, serving our nation. Uh, let's continue to pray for them, for God to watch over them, to protect them, to keep them. Let's continue to pray for each other. And let's continue to pray for our leaders uh, to have the wisdom that they need to lead in this hour. Now, real quickly, before I jump into the message, uh, a couple quick things that our team has been working on is be, to be on the lookout for is here at DTC, we have something we call Man Cave for the men, and then we have something called Sisterhood for the ladies, and we have youth gatherings. And so, of course, we can't do those corporately together yet, uh, but our team is working on putting some things together for an online experience. And so be on the lookout for those as you, uh, as you tune into our social media platforms. Also, let me just share real quickly uh, some quarantine humor. And so here are a couple memes that people shared with me. Here's one. Uh, returned from the grocery store with the husband. Took off the mask. Turns out that husband wasn't mine. Be attentive. All right, so if you go to the grocery store, you've been warned. Make sure you leave the store with your right spouse. Here's another one. Today the, west, the devil whispered in my ear, you are not strong enough to withstand the storm. I whispered six feet back. Satan. Again, that's your quarantine humor for today. We got to laugh. We got to find moments uh, to, you know, to, to, to enjoy, you know, even what we're going through and the times that we're facing here today. There's always uh, many blessings that I know that we can count. You know, count your blessings. Don't count the troubles and don't focus all your attention on what's wrong in your life, but pay attention and focus on the things that are right in your life. But again, that, guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in today. I have, a, I have a message for us here today that, that I really believe uh, can bless us uh, in the season that we are in here today, the, today. The title to my message today is actually a question. And the question is this, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? You see, right now, you know, over the last several weeks, all of us have been under this cloud of, of fear and anxiety and worry and uncertainty. You know, in this unprecedented time, it has actually presented an opportunity for us that we have never had in our lifetime. Uh, let, let, let me tell you what I mean by that. See, I believe that, that each one of us has an opportunity right now that we may never have again in our lifetime. Think about it. Just think about this. For the very first time in history, the world has literally paused. I don't know about you, but, but there have been times in my life when I've been, you know, just busy with so many things to do at work and, and busy paying bills and, and parenting and, and doing this and doing that, that there have been times in my life where I have said, where I've thought to myself, I wish I could just push the pause button. Have you ever been there? Have you ever said to yourself, I, I, I wish that I could just make life slow down just a little bit? Well, you know what, my friends? That time is here right now. For the first time in history, my friends, there are no basketball games or football games to watch. There are no concerts or events or, or movie theaters to go to. 
There is no, there is no, you know, hanging out at a restaurant or, or your special place that you like to go to. You don't have to wake up and get the kids ready and, and rush them off to school. You don't have to take your kids to, to baseball practice or, you know, or, or ballet rehearsal or some type of, of game, a soccer game on a Saturday morning. You don't have to, these big gatherings with family to go to. You know, you don't, for most of us, for most of us today, you know, we're not working a, a long 40, 50, or even 60 hour week to stress out about. You don't have to be frustrated, you know, driving to work today because of the traffic or because you left later than you should have left. You know, today the world is on pause. You know, I really believe that in, in, in future, in the future history books, this moment in time might be described as the great pause that happened in the world. Think about it. The entire world has come to a pause. For the first time in our lifetime, the busy, fast-paced, modern world that we live in has come to a pause. And this is what I believe. I believe there is a blessing to be discovered in this moment. I believe there is much to be learned, and I believe God wants to teach us some great things while we're in this pause. Let me, let me share this statement with you that I want you to think about. This momentary pause in life has given us an opportunity to reevaluate, to realign, and prioritize our life around what matters most. Just think about that for a second. You see, usually we're so busy, usually we're running from one thing to another that we don't have time to, 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 to re-evaluate, to evaluate. And I think we can do that right now. Because listen to me, that time is coming again. Very soon here, that, that fast-paced world that has kind of slowed down is going to start up again. That list of 100 things that you have to do is going to start up again. But before it does, I want to urge you to ask yourself this question, what can I learn from this? And I want to ask you to, to reevaluate, to realign, and to prioritize your life around what matters most. You see, we may not have this opportunity again, but we have it right now. And so what can we learn from this? I want to I, I wanna give you four lessons that I believe we can learn, that we are learning right now. Again, these are not the only four, but these are just four. And I want to encourage you to, to think about what you're learning in this time. But, but here's the first lesson that I think we are learning right now. And it is this, a renewed gratitude for life. You see, during this pause, we are learning to appreciate the little things. Just think about it. You know, we're learning to appreciate the freedom that we have uh, to just be able to jump in our vehicle and leave our house and go run an errand. We are, we are appreciating today, my friends. We are grateful for the, the grocery workers and the stores that, that have all that we need and all that we want. Today, we are more grateful for our teachers that teach our kids because we have realized how invaluable and how difficult a job they have in teaching our children. Come on, don't lie. How many of you are ready to send your kids back to school the first week after homeschooling? I know there are some of you that are like, man, not a first week, the first day I was ready to send them back. But you see, we've learned to, to appreciate our teachers, we've learned to appreciate our school system more. We have a renewed gratitude for, for doctors and nurses and first responders and truck drivers and farmers and laborers who are working diligently to grow and to harvest our crops. You know, we are learning, and I know you can probably say this today, that, that you are grateful for your job. 
you're grateful for your workspace. You know, in the beginning, you know, working from home sounded relaxing and fun until you found out it wasn't. And so we're learning to appreciate the little things. And I know those are not the only things that we're grateful for today, but I believe right now, one of the lessons that we're learning is a renewed gratitude for life. Here's another lesson that I think we can take away from this time that we have all been facing, and it's this, social media isn't enough. It turns out social media isn't enough. You see, we need connection. I think most of you would agree with me that connecting with your friends and family and coworkers and students, you know, through social media or to, through Zoom just doesn't quite meet the need. It just isn't the same. And so what are we learning, my friends, in this social media world that we have been living in is that we need each other. We, we, are, we are social people and we need to be in social environments, whether that is at work, whether that is at church, whether that is at the gym or it is at school, we need each other. We, we desire, one of the things we're learning in this time is that we desire to be around people. You know, just waking up every single day and, and seeing the same people every single day there at home, you have learned that you want to see other people. You have learned that you want to be around other people. See, it turns out God was right, my friends. We have been created to do life together. See, what it turns out that God was right, that we have been created to love, and we have been created to be loved. What is the greatest commandment that Jesus gave us, my friends? To love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is to love our neighbor, to love each other like we love ourselves. Listen to this word here in Hebrews chapter 10. It says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. What are we learning? During this season, we are learning that we need each other. We need each other. We long for one another. We long to, to be around people. We were not created for isolation. We were created to have connection with others. This time away from normal has taught us to, 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 that we love, that we love being loved, and we, that we love loving others. Here's another lesson that I think we are learning during this time, and it's this. Health and family is true wealth. You see, during this global health crisis, you know, most people haven't been praying, God, you know, give me more money, make me a millionaire. No, most people have been praying prayers like, Father, God, please take care of my family. Keep my family healthy and safe. You see, it turns out, my friends, that money can buy you a lot of things, but money can't buy you time, and it cannot protect you from an invisible virus. See, this pause is, is reminding us of what matters most in life. We are learning that spending quality time with family and loved ones and the people that God has brought around us matters. We are learning that, that having a, a church home and a, and a church family in your life is a blessing. We are learning to live for a higher purpose has meaning and purpose that brings blessing to our life. What are we learning during this season, my friends? We are learning about what matters most. I remember Jesus saying something about this long before the coronavirus stopped the world. Listen to Jesus' words here in Mark chapter 8, verse 36. Listen to what he said. 
He says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? In other words, Jesus was saying, is what good will it do for us if we accomplish great goals, if we achieve great successes, but yet we lose ourselves and what matters most in life? I think what Jesus is saying to us here, my friends, is striving to be healthy in your mind, in your body, and in your spirit has greater value. Where are you with that here today? See, I believe this is an opportunity for all of us to, to reevaluate, to realign, and to prioritize our life around what matters most. You see, this pause isn't going to last forever. We already know that our government leaders are, are talking. They've already given us a plan, and they're talking about how we can get back to the normal or some kind of normal that we had. What it means, my friends, is that 100-mile-per-hour life is, is, going, is coming. But before it does, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Ask yourself, how can I take this opportunity of a lifetime to, to reevaluate, to realign and prioritize my life around what matters most. Here's a fourth lesson that I believe each one of us is learning, and it's this. We need Jesus more than we think. Think about it. It took only three months for this microscopic virus to spread all over the world and cause this great pause in life. What is it teaching us, my friends? I believe one of the things that it has taught us, my friends, this virus has taught man that we are not as smart or as invincible as we think we are. This worldwide pandemic has reminded, reminded us that we need Jesus more than we think. We need him when things are going well, and we need him when things are not going so well. I think about this man named Paul who, who, who lived several hundred years ago and he discovered this truth. Listen to his words as, as he talks about what he learned during a, during a time of crisis like the one that we are facing today. Listen to his words here in Philippians chapter 4. He says, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret, he says, of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. What did Paul learn in that season of his life? He learned that the secret to being at peace and to being content in whatever season of life is to be in relationship with Christ. And that was true for Paul back then, and it is true for you and me here today. My friends, we can learn right now that we need Jesus more than we think. I know for many people, this season, this time when when, when panic, has, panic arose in your life, when, when, when you felt so much fear and anxiety, I know that, that a lot of people were trying to grab a hold of something, something that would give them peace, something that would give them strength, something that would give them some measure of contentment in this moment in life, but there was nothing to grab a hold of. My friends, I want to tell you today that Jesus is that friend that wants to stick closer to you than a brother. He is that, that rock, that foundation that will make your life sturdy, healthy, and strong. I believe right now we have an opportunity to reprioritize our life, to reevaluate where our relationship with God has been. Like I said, I know that there are people in this, there are some of you during this time where you had no relationship with Christ. One of the greatest blessings that you can receive during this pause is to enter into this relationship with him. And I know for others of you, you've known about Christ, but maybe 
what you've learned during this season is that your commitment to God is not where you know it can be. This moment, this pause has, has reminded you that you need to be closer to him, that you need to spend more time with him, that you need to go to church more, that you need to enter into a stronger commitment with him right now. Before life speeds up again, each one of us has the opportunity to make some better choices. And I want to encourage you to do that with this message. That's why, that's why I want you to think about this question. What can I learn from this? See, these challenging times can be a defining moment for you. You can come out of this thing stronger and better and more focused than before. And one of the ways you can do that is by asking yourself this question. What can I learn from this? By thinking about how you can reevaluate, how you can realign and prioritize your life around what matters most. Let this be a time, my friends, where you are reminded and where we are all reminded that if you have Christ, then you have all that you need. Come on, right where you're at, you know, give me, a, give me an amen with the comments there. Give God some praise. We serve a God that is good. We serve a God that is for us and not against us. And we serve a God that is and is still and is always in control. And so before we, we, we transition, I want to, we always take an opportunity to, to receive, to say a prayer and receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. See, God is talking to you right now. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus came just for you. He saw you in this moment right now, and he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you strength. He wants to, to real, help you realign your life. He wants to help you prioritize your life around what matters most. And he wants to give you the hope of a secure future with him in eternity. And so let's take an opportunity right now. Whether you have been distant from God or whether you at one time had a commitment with him, but maybe you got off course right now, is a good opportunity to get close to him. And so I want to lead you through a prayer. We believe this prayer of faith, my friends. You see, our relationship with God is all about faith. And right now, through this prayer of faith, we believe you can enter into this relationship with God. And so let's take a moment. Right where you're at, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I receive a new life. Jesus, today, I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. Now help me to learn about you and to walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen <clears throat> and amen. Well, listen, if you said that prayer today, my friends, congratulations. The Bible says this is a new day. This is a new beginning. I want to encourage you to, to keep following us on social media and and when we get back to coming to church together, you know, I cannot wait to meet you. But if you have made a decision for Christ right now, right where you're at, if you would please text the number on your screen, I'd love to send you a free gift to help you in this new commitment that you've made with God. Now, I want to pray. As I close this out here today, you know, I want to pray for all of us. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God would watch over us and help us during this time. And so, Father, I pray right now, over every person watching this on their screen, on their television, on their phone, on their tablet device, wherever they are, Father, I know that you love them. I know that you are close to them. I pray, Father, for all of us, that you would help us in this season, Lord God. Give us the strength, the peace, and the courage that we need every single day. And Lord, help us to learn something in this pause in life. Help us to, 
to realign, to reevaluate, and to prioritize our life around what matters most. Amen and amen. Again, guys, thank you so much, you know, for, for tuning into the word. I'm going to pass it on to the team. They have something to share with you. But again, until we see each other again, God bless you guys.